Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, live from Camp Dearborn in Milford, where a man was pulled from the water. We'll tell you how he's doing. Thousands of people lining up around the KMAC building downtown, all lining up for what they thought was going to be a free home. That turned out to be not the case, though. They were angry. We'll talk about it and what they call was a bait and switch. OK, Nick, but we begin here on the 4th of July with the weather for live radar showing some rain moving through in spots while the sun is shining in other spots. But one thing's for sure, this high heat has its grip on all of us. Boy, that is true. It is hot outside. Temperatures once again in the 90s. That's right. And with the humidity, it feels well above that number. Let's get over to Ben. Ben, you're focused on the Farmington area right now. What's going on there? Yeah, we're all sweating out there, but this area here, specifically uh, north of M5, we've been tracking a cell where it's been raining for a good chunk of about the last 90 minutes. Uh, this has been moderate and occasionally heavy rain, uh, pretty much all in the same spot. So this is the area that's south of 696, east of 275 and there you see uh, Grand River Drake. It's really that area between about 9 and 11 uh, that we've been focused on. So now most of that heavy rain has moved north of M5 up towards the interstate. There's not a whole lot more out there. Most of us are dry right now. This is the latest check of four live radar, although we're seeing a very similar situation now starting to develop in parts of Genesee County. A little bit of heavier rain there and also some lightning strikes as these thunderstorms get a little bit more oomph behind them uh, in this heat and humidity. We can expect to see these scattered around as we get through the next uh, several hours, at least until sunset tonight. Heat index readings close to 100 degrees out there. That heat advisory lasts through 8 o'clock for all of us and for the Tri-County area until 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It's been extended, so by the time we set up those fireworks, we'll be around 83 tonight. More on the relief coming, and it is coming in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, we begin with a story developing tonight in Milford. A man rescued from the water at Camp Dearborn. He wasn't breathing when they pulled him out. Let's get right out to Coco McAvoy. Coco, I understand they immediately started doing chest compressions. Yes, good afternoon to both of you. And we're talking about everyday beachgoers who stepped in to help this man. And without them, there's no telling what the outcome would have been. It's a busy beach day at Camp Dearborn in Milford. Everybody's here having a great time, enjoying, and just now I feel like I have to be more on the lookout for everybody and help everybody, but hopefully nothing like that would happen again. Lou Sierra is talking about the scary situation that unfolded here just after 1 o'clock this afternoon. A 55-year-old man was pulled from the water by a beachgoer after nearly drowning. Mostly everybody ran over there. Everybody, including Lou Sierra herself. She's CPR certified and wanted to do what she could to help. Because it was my first time seeing something like that. But in that moment, all you're thinking about is helping that person. And you don't think about nothing else but his life. Cell phone video shows what happened next. State police troopers started giving CPR to the man and used an AED. The man started breathing and was taken to the hospital. The people who witnessed it all can't stop thinking about the man. Because it's a life we're talking about and we want to help, you know, save everybody's life matters. So we wanted to help and save his life. And it's always great to hear about people stepping in to help another person. And again, that man is in stable condition at the hospital. Back to you. Coco, is there a reason state police have taken this investigation instead of Milford police? Yes, so we did ask that question, and apparently the Michigan State Police Department has a relationship now with Camp Dearborn, and they provide the law enforcement services here. Oh, that makes sense. Thanks, Coco. Tensions were running high this 4th of July after 1,500 people lined up in Detroit for free homes, or at least that's what they thought. Some even camped out overnight, only to find out there are no free homes, just a petition for them to sign. As Nick Monticelli shows us, the disappointment for many was overwhelming. So here's the deal. If you talk to the majority of the people here, which were about 1,000 to 1,500 of them, they say this was disingenuous at the very least. And there are still people lined up trying to sign up for what they thought was going to be a free home. That is not the case. It is what the organizer calls a step towards a free home. But those who actually figured out what was going on realize 
that's really not it either. Excellent. Don't have us all come down here under cross yeah. pretenses. About 1,500 people showed up lining around Detroit City Hall, all of them expecting to get a free home. It isn't necessarily a scam, but many call it false advertising. A group behind this Detroit Free Homes website called for a gathering this 4th of July, and their site talks about free homes with links to an application. But there are no free homes. They shouldn't be deceiving us. That's all they did was tell a lie. Why y'all have us come all the way out here? People getting up 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. In reality, this group was gathering petition signatures, trying to force the city of Detroit to give up homes currently in the land bank. If there are this many people showing up, though, do you think maybe you misrepresented it? No, we wanted this many people to show up. But we, they all think they were getting a free house, all of them. Some of them got misinformation. They, they are going to get their homes. It's going to happen. A similar event was held exactly two years ago in Highland Park. That turned into a riot, and the organizer was arrested. Today, there were no arrests. Some, though, backed the organizer, understanding his approach. People want stuff like this. It ain't coming like that. You have steps to take. So you got to come out here and vote to let them know that you really want this. It starts with signatures. Yeah. If they just said, all oh, we need the signatures, nobody would have came down here. But when you get us down here under frost pretenses saying you're going to get people homes, and there's people down here who really need those homes, who was expecting to move or get somewhere, get ahead in life, and then you get down here, you want me to sign a petition, something that I could have signed at the grocery store. That's not right. I've got mine. In downtown Detroit, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Now, the group did apply for a permit for today, which was denied by the city, but the organizer was allowed to stay because of freedom of speech. The police chief in Centerline says things like this just don't happen in his city. But this 4th of July, his department is investigating a double shooting. It happened right near the corner of Van Dyke and Tyson. And as our Larry Spruill shows us, this may be connected to something that happened earlier in Warren. Police say the shooting happened at Tyson and Van Dyke around 4 o'clock this morning. They say another car pulled up and fired shots into the other car, shooting two people. But no, we don't normally get this type of activity in our city. It's a strong statement from Centerline Police Chief Paul Mazinski, and he wants things to stay that way in spite of the early morning 4th of July shooting. The chief says although things ended in his city, it started somewhere else. It's all stemmed from a party that had occurred in another city at a hotel, a birthday party. After the party, the people involved drove from Warren to Centerline to meet back up with the people they rode with, but they did not realize they were being followed. Uh, the person got out of the car as, as they started to go, uh, a small fight erupted, and the, the individuals that were in the other vehicle uh, just started shooting. They shot about four to five rounds. Local 4 was the only news station on scene of the shooting. The blue lights and crime scene tape, not a familiar sight for this city or this normally busy intersection. There was a, gr uh, a large group of people there that was involved in this. We're talking like six to eight people uh, that were involved in it. That in itself is a large group, and it did happen on Van Dyke, which is the main thoroughfare. But at the same time, it was 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and the police chief tells me that although the shooting did happen earlier this morning, there were security cameras in that area. We tried to stop by those businesses with those security cameras earlier today, but they were closed for the holiday. We're live tonight, Larry Spruill, Local 4. Well, Larry, do police have an idea who fired the shots at least? Well, Kimberly, as of right now, they don't have any arrests made in this case, but they are taking a look at that security footage. They are also interviewing witnesses at this very moment. Kimberly. All right, Larry. Detroit police looking for a little bit of help, finding two men wanted for hacking gas pumps. Take a close look at these images. These two guys, they're accused of stealing about 600 gallons of gas from a station on West Seven Mile. Police believe the men used a remote device to hack the gas pump. That device prevented the clerk from turning off the pump with a computer. If you have any information about who these guys might be, call Detroit police. Tragedy strikes during an early 4th of July celebration. This was in Illinois. Two people dead after a tree branch collapses onto them. This is just horrible. Just as a fireworks celebration was beginning, the branch collapsed on a crowd of spectators. The Rock Island Sheriff's Department says the branch fell 25 feet without warning. In addition to the two killed, five others were injured, including a 21-year-old pregnant woman. At the time of this incident, it was about 79 degrees. 
Uh, it wasn't windy. There was about a three mile an hour wind uh, when you were able to uh, to find that. So again, it was not a um, uh, in any condition where you would expect this to happen. Well, it's not clear what caused the branch to break, but the sheriff says the tree itself appeared to be in good condition. One of the biggest parades in southeast Michigan kicked off this morning, and it helped kick off the celebration of the 4th of July. Hundreds gathered in downtown Northville for their annual Independence Day parade. The parade started this morning and featured military veterans, Northville High School's marching band, vintage cars, and mascots from the Lions and Tigers. All children in attendance were also invited to join the parade, and they could decorate their bicycles for a number of prizes. Well, it should be a simple question, but her answer is very complicated. Yeah, hey, new tonight, why something that happened in the 90s now has the Saginaw Director of Animal Control suddenly placed on leave. And they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The decision migrant families are being forced to make in order to keep their families together. But first, new hope in Thailand. What the boys, stuck close to a kilometer underground, say they've now heard that could get them out much faster and safer. 